Hello and welcome to the Engage Brain Podcast. Today's episode is sponsored by Lie to Me, facial recognition and emotion detection. Do you have trouble reading others' emotions? Can you not see their soul through their eyes? Well, worry no more. Lie to Me is based on the fundamental work of Paul Ekman. It recognizes facial expressions and emotions, and even tells you when the emotions are matching on their face to the emotions they're feeling in their body, with over 50% accuracy. This technology will revolutionize the business world, the dating scene, and everything in between. Don't get lost in emotions again, and dare people to lie to me, or you. How many of your past memories are neutral, just boring old everyday memories? Probably not that many. Researchers have found a so-called emotional bump or boost to memories that help encode memories better uh, better and aid in recall as well. Today I'll speak with Carolyn Bach, who is studying how emotion and memory interact in the brain. Thank you for coming in. Uh, we're going to be talking about emotion and memories. Memory is one of my favorite topics. Uh, so, why? Uh, what got you interested in uh, memory? I'm, oh, I'm sorry, I'm backing up. So, second podcast, making mistakes already. I'm here with Carolyn Bach. We're talking about emotion and memory. Uh, so, now going back to the question, uh, what got you interested in the topic? Um, I sort of found it interesting because I feel like as I'm getting older, I was sort of like reminiscing a lot, like especially this year. And I was noticing, I mean, I always, like, tend to really, like, recall sort of emotional memories. Like, the mem- like when I reminisce, it's always just, like, something that's had, like, an emotional thing to it. And um, I can almost, like, feel like I'm reliving, like, those memories. Like, they're just so vivid to me. And so then when we were thinking about topics, and I, like, Googled topics having to do with cognitive neuroscience, I was like, oh, like, emotion, and then, like, under kind of that sub-tab, it was, like, emotional memories, and I was like, ching so it's kind of like, maybe I can figure out why my brain is doing this, so that's my topic. Yeah, so <laughs> what have you found interesting so far? Um, well, kind of the big thing that I found, or, um, that makes sense to me, um, is there are a lot of gender differences with it, um, so especially like um, women have been found to be better at remembering these emotional memories than men. Um, and then also the evaluation of these emotional experiences and the encoding of the memories themselves seem to be more tightly integrated in women than men. So I guess it kind of like, I was sitting here going like, oh wow, like this is why, like I'm a girl, so maybe like this is why it's like really happening to me. So that's kind of been the most interesting thing, I guess, because it's helping me kind of answer my question mm-hmm. originally. Yeah, and do you think that that goes to how women interact with each other versus men interact with each other, or, or why do you think there is this difference? I'm not really sure about that, but I think it's kind of just sort of like, I think it's important for us to like understand like men and women do go about things very differently because I think there's like a huge thing like women can do like everything just as well as men can and stuff like that and like to some extent like that's definitely true but then like we do have to like acknowledge that there are a lot of brain differences so it's definitely like why men w- may act like a certain way towards something and why a woman may act something like a certain way so it's not necessarily that women are crazy it's just sort of like brains are different so yeah, and do you think it's a per, uh, the feeling the emotions themselves or like a perception of emotions? Because I'm thinking like uh, of differences where you and I share some event and you find it like really mm-hmm. important and I find it important but I don't have like the same emotional attachment to it. So then when we come back to it later, you're like, oh, remember this thing? And I'm like, yeah. no. And you're like, well, yeah. why don't you? I think it's just like, as I said, like the encoding and everything it seems to be more tightly integrated in the women. So then when they're coming back and remembering something, I think, yes, like their perception is probably just different because it's totally just been put into their brains differently. Yeah, so, so you're saying emotional, that's like that emotional bump or that emotional boost for, yeah, for, for remembering? Me, yes. So. Uh, and have you found any uh, interesting like context, uh, remembering in a different context? So like I'm highly emotional and and one maybe sad like a sad event Mm -hmm. and then uh, I'm trying to recall that event in like a neutral or happy context later am I worse or uh, different Uh, on recalling that type of memory I know that there's difference it's like the mood congruency effect Mm -hmm. um I haven't done like a lot of looking into that 
Um, I might have it on that infographic that we did. Not sure. Yes. Yeah, so okay. You, as you're looking at the science behind emotional memories, it's on Imager. Uh, yes. And on our Tumblr, engagebrains.tumblr.com. Um. I feel like, I think the kind of like thing is if you're in a negative mood, you're more likely to recall a negative event. Um, and then I feel like already if you're in a bad mood, then you're going to probably recall it more negatively because that was what congruency would be. <laughs> so that would be my answer without having really looked into the research on that. Yeah, and beyond the gender differences in these emotional memories, were there any other interesting findings uh, so far? Um, kind of one of those is sort of going into the developing areas of research and they've actually been like with this understanding of how we encode um, emotion and the memories um, there's been a lot of research looking into how kind of using the cognitive behavior therapy might help people um, who have depression or like PTSD um, sort of disorders that emotion may influence the phases of the memory so kind of getting them to put like a positive spin on kind of um, the recalling of their emotions, so that's of their memories. So that's sort of again like something that I would need to look more into to like really talk about. But that's I think that's interesting because it's really like taking the sort of like knowledge people are like oh well, like that makes sense why do I care and then kind of giving the people a reason to care about it. So yeah, did, did you see the movie Inside Out? I haven't. No, okay. I haven't. It's just a, a, I need to see uh, it. Though. Yeah, a random. But in, in that movie, they um, at first the young girl uh, is forming these memories, and they're all either happy, like an entire mm -hmm. memory is either happy or uh, sad, and uh, the emotions, like uh, emotion characters, touch the memories and mm -hmm. make them sad or happy. And there's like a bunch of happy memories that sadness uh, touches. Uh, so like in the present moment, okay. sadness touches it, and then it kind of colors the memory somewhat sad so I think that's interesting to yeah. see how you can take sad memories and then recall them in the present with a kind of different spin on them and, mm -hmm. and change them so they're not as sad or negative mm -hmm. easier said than done <laughs> <laughs> yeah it's not like uh, <laughs> it's shown in Inside Out but uh, definitely something an uh, interesting new uh, developing area of research uh, how about uh, in terms of confusing aspects of your topic for the public uh, is there anything that you found um, confusing that you could clear up I don't know if I can totally clear it up yet, just um, I'm still kind of in the preliminary stages of everything, um, but I feel like kind of the most confusing thing is that a lot of my topic has to do with, like, there's a lot of vocab behind it, um, and it's just, there's a lot of just science stuff, you know, it's not so, it's, I mean, I'm sure like, you know, all of the topics like, you know, have a lot of scientific vocab and stuff, but I feel like so much of it is like amygdala, like encoding retrieval and like nobody like knows what that means like outside of things whereas if you're saying like music like in school like that makes sense but it's just sort of like I feel like this is kind of like a step up scientific that a lot of people I don't think would be super like gung-ho mm -hmm. <laughs> into yeah yeah that, I think that's a but an important aspect of this research I mean emotion is something that we feel on the, mm -hmm. all the time memories are things that we deal with all the time so how can we understand all these things, especially um, helping us uh, deal with you know, potentially painful memories? Uh, how about, uh, have, have you uh, received any public response to your uh, infographic? Uh, you, did you send it out on Facebook or anything like that? Um, I did post it on Facebook, and it's kind of sad, but as of um, yesterday at 1, I think I had 24 views. Oh. But, you know, I mean, I haven't like ever really posted anything out there, so I don't really know if that's like bad or good. But yeah. Probably should have like put it on Pinterest or something because okay. those really like circulate. Mm -hmm. But I don't know. I feel like people would have been like, "Oh, like emotion memory, like doesn't have to do with sleep." So, <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah. So there might be some topics that are a little bit more interesting yeah. to people, a little bit more catchy. Uh, how about uh, going forward? So you mentioned one area of developing research with the um, kind of behavioral therapy. Uh, are there any other newer, develop exciting areas of research in emotion and memory? Um, the other thing they're looking at is the mood concurrency effect. Mm -hmm. I haven't really, like, you know, really gone into that a lot yet as far as my research goes, but I know that's, like, another thing that they're really looking at is sort of seeing, like, how that really comes into play. Yeah. So. 
Yeah, just before we start uh, started recording, uh, we were talking about music. Uh, do you think that uh, music plays a big role in emotion and memories? Oh yeah, I mean everybody like has that song, has like oh, a couple songs that like it'll come on the radio and you're like oh my gosh, like I mean, so that's definitely something to look into. Yeah, I, I want to throw out a shout out to my friend Amy Belfi. Uh, Twitter hashtag Oracle Belfie. Uh, she, she looked at um, emotional memories, so she played um, songs from like the uh, emotional or adolescent bump, emotional bump. Uh, so there's like this time period between like when you're 14 years old and like your mid 20s, uh, where you, people later in life remember that period really well. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, so bringing in like uh, 30 to 50 year old people um, based on their birthday, they'd play. Mm -hmm. um, these particular songs and yeah it was exactly that like oh this is my jam like I remember yeah. driving down the road this kind of uh, thing so it's I think it's really interesting how uh, music can tap into emotions and, mm -hmm. and bring out those those memories I think that's why my iPod is still filled with everything from middle school because <laughs> it's like I don't know. good times <laughs> yeah all right so it's uh, um, kind of starting to wrap up here uh, is there any one really important thing that you want to mention or, or communicate about your research so far um, I think sort of the big thing is just understanding, like, kind of, like, how much emotions just sort of dominate you, I mean, and this sort of, just looking from this context, um, you know, you don't just feel emotions during these events, like, they influence the way your brain encodes it, they influence the way that you, like, will retrieve it later, they're gonna color your perception about the event then and the event, like, later. I mean, and then, like, even just outside of, like, just memories, it's, like, emotions are affecting your judgment, your choices, like, kind of sort of really dominate you, so I think that's kind of the big takeaway, it's emotions. Yeah. All right, so uh, I guess then wrapping up, especially as our hallway gets a little bit louder here, uh, is there anything you'd like to promote, uh, anything social media people should follow you on? Is there some cool hidden talent that you share in different places? Um, I don't really have like a hidden talent. I think kind of my big thing is just sort of like trying to do something for yourself every day. Whether it's like taking a walk like without your headphones and like listening to the birds. I don't like birds, but you know, they're nature. So just having like at least 10 minutes of you time, I think that's yeah. important. I, I like that. That's a good piece of yeah. advice and ties in with your topic in terms yeah. of emotions. <laughs> uh, and then any. The last thing, uh, any uh, fad or product or something that you'd like to share with me or others that you think is cool or, or interesting that people should check out? I've got a couple that I think are weird, but yeah. uh, I mean, um, it's like a lot of people on my team have like Fitbits right now, and I, mm -hmm. like that's just sort of seems to be coming like a culture, this Fitbit culture, so I think those are kind of weird, but yeah, tracking your steps. <laughs> yeah, I think it'd be interesting to um, be able to put even more information into that so yeah. not only are you tracking like your movement and I don't know heart rate or whatever else Fitbit does but like you could like tag it with uh, what you were doing um, or how mm -hmm. you were feeling that at that moment I wonder if that would help with people's memories yeah. uh, later all that the smart watches and mm. stuff I don't know it's all confusing oh, interesting <laughs> so a, a little free advertising for Fit Fitbit uh, <laughs> but thank you for coming in I uh, really appreciate it Thanks again to Carolyn for coming in. I really appreciated hearing about emotion, hearing about memory, memory being one of my favorite topics. Uh, speaking of my favorite topics, uh, we'll go to this, this segment of uh, the podcast, Jake's Jams. Jake's Jams, where I talk about things that I've been interested in lately. Uh, and uh, since Carolyn is someone that I'm pursuing research with, I'll have to uh, give a shout out to a research tool, Mendeley. Uh, it's a paper organizing and citation organizing tool. Uh, it's free, and it's uh, been really easy to... Uh, be able to share papers uh, and store papers in a nice organized way and then use uh, the citation management uh, to not have to think about uh, APA styling all that much. Uh, so Mendeley has uh, been a great uh, research tool and something I'd definitely recommend uh, for everyone out there. Uh, again, turning to the mailbag, that's obviously empty since uh, I'm recording all of these episodes uh, so t close together. Uh, but in the future, uh, if you have any questions, uh, just tweet me at engagebrain on Twitter, or uh, let me know through email. Uh, it's my last name at gmail.com. Uh, if you have a very detailed or intricate question that can't fit in those 140 character limits, uh, at least as long as those character limits uh, exist in Twitter for the time being. Uh, so uh, let me know if you have any questions. I'll be excited to start answering questions later.
And with that, uh, I'll sign off and uh, talk to you next time.